I think it's best not to discuss this any further because you haven't studied yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. I have also read um, chapter 7 on the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, I don't know how much time we have left. Would you prefer to look at that? Would you be prepared if we discuss the Holy Spirit? Or yeah, would you certainly. want time to discuss that? Would you want preparation? Uh, no, we can discuss it now. Okay. okay. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, Simon. Um, it's Lesson 7, What is Jehovah Like? in the book Enjoy Life Forever. All right. Thank you. Paragraph 1 says, why are we unable to see God? Have you got yeah. it? And yeah. it says, God is a spirit, which I would agree with, John 4, 24. Jehovah, by which they mean the Father, does not have a physical body. He is a spirit who lives in heaven, a place that we cannot see, which I would agree with. So I agree with the statement that Jehovah, meaning the Father, is a spirit. God is a spirit. That's great. Now, this chapter goes on to the Holy Spirit, so what I would want to know is, is the Holy Spirit a spirit? Holy Spirit is is uh, active force. It's, it's just uh, something, just like energy that he uses, just like electricity. You need to and prove that. It's no good just saying that. You would need to prove that from the Bible. Um, my question is regarding the statement, God is a spirit, John 4, 24. Jehovah does not have a physical body. He is a spirit who lives in heaven, a place that we cannot see. What I want to know is, is the Holy Spirit also a spirit? Or is the Holy Spirit not a spirit? Holy Spirit is his force at the disposal of Jehovah God himself, which is a separate thing. So the Holy Spirit is separate to Jehovah, is that what you're saying? That is correct. And is Holy Spirit a separate spirit or is Holy Spirit separate to Jehovah but not a spirit? Holy Spirit is at Jehovah's disposal to whatever he wants it to accomplish. So when he wants to send it to Samson, when he was alive, he was used by Jehovah to do powerful works. When Jesus was walking on the earth, he had this same power from Jehovah uh, to enable him. To I rest. totally agree with you. The Holy Spirit is called the power of God in Luke 1.35. Yeah. I have no problem with that. What I want yeah. to know is, is the Holy Spirit a spirit, yes or no? Is the Holy Spirit a spirit or is the Holy Spirit not a spirit? It's a very simple question. You want to say something? Sorry. Okay. Uh, when you say it is a spirit, what actually uh, comes across is actually you are referring to it as a person. No, I didn't say person. Yeah, yeah. I did not say that. Yeah. No, yeah. no, please, please because listen. Let, let, let me read your book. Your oh. book... Paragraph one says God is a spirit. No reference to person here. It says yeah. God is a spirit. John four twenty four. Jehovah does not have a physical body. He is a spirit who lives in heaven, a place that we cannot see. It says that Jehovah, meaning the father, is a spirit. And I agree with that. What I'm yeah. asking is, is the Holy Spirit a spirit? The answer is yes or it's no. OK, so if you go down, actually, yeah, it talks about God, Holy Spirit. Yes, in yeah. section four, which I've read. That's right, yeah. I've read in great detail. But I want to know, is Holy... You said the Holy Spirit is separate to Jehovah earlier. You said that about two, three minutes ago. What That's I want right. to know is, is Holy Spirit a separate spirit to Jehovah or is Holy Spirit a separate force or, or, or whatever the Holy Spirit is? Is Holy Spirit spirit, yes or no? Yeah, it is uh, his spirit right. or force that God uses right. to accomplish his work. So you say the Holy Spirit is spirit, but then a few minutes ago you said the Holy Spirit is separate to Jehovah. So that you believe right. that Jehovah has two spirits. Jehovah is a spirit and then there's another separate spirit to him, which is the Holy Spirit. Have I understood that correctly? No. I was going by actually what it says in paragraph 4, 
that it is not a person. I'm not. I'm not asking about person. I'm asking about spirit. I want to know: Is the Holy Spirit a spirit? And you said yes. Holy Spirit is a spirit, but you said Holy Spirit is separate to Jehovah. It is at His disposal. Whatever Jehovah wants to have done, He doesn't go there personally. He just sends His Spirit to do it. Okay. So you would say that Jehovah has two spirits. There's, there's Jehovah is a spirit, and then Jehovah has another spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. It is. Uh, well, that's the meaning of the word separate. That's the meaning of the word separate. It's not a person, but it is a force, active force. And this force is Jehovah's force. That is correct. But then you said the Holy Spirit is separate to Jehovah, so you believe that Jehovah's power or Jehovah's force is somehow separate to him. Because you yeah. said the Holy Spirit is separate to Jehovah. Jehovah, yeah, Holy Spirit is at his disposal. Whatever he wants to accomplish, he uh, sends his Holy Spirit Robert. Yes, but you're saying the Holy Spirit is something separate to Jehovah. It's another spirit that's separate to him. I'm, I'm going by what you have told me, Simon. Yeah, I understand you. And I am an imperfect person. What actually you have to go by is what you read in the Bible, Robert. So, okay. Uh, okay. yeah. So, whatever you can find actually in the Bible itself, for example, in... Uh, in Luke chapter 11 or Acts chapter 2, it talks about Holy Spirit. Do you, yes. do you think or, I don't know that? Do you think oh, you're telling no, me something you know, I don't know? No, no, yeah, it, it, that's not what I meant, actually. Hmm. I'm just saying, actually, don't go by what I say. Well, I'm not. Oh. I'm, I'm trying to go from what, what yes. the Bible says. Um, my understanding of the Holy Spirit... I mean, I, I think you haven't prepared on this again. I, I did say, did you want some time to look at this? And you said, no, you'll discuss it right away. But I don't think you've prepared on this. Um, and you have to understand your topic when you discuss the Bible or, or religion. It's very important that you discuss it before. You, you study before you talk to somebody else. As I understand it, the Holy Spirit is personal. I'm a Trinitarian. The Holy Spirit possesses the four aspects of personality. The Holy Spirit has self-cognizance, which means he can speak and say me and I. The wind can't speak and say me or I. Electricity can't speak and say me and I. But in Acts 13 too, the Holy Spirit speaks and says me and I. The Holy Spirit has self-will. He forbids Paul to preach in Asia, Acts 16.6. The Holy Spirit has a mind, and I think that's... Romans 8 27 I could be wrong about that reference but the Holy Spirit certainly has a mind the Holy Spirit has intellect because he can teach and you can't teach if you don't have intellect and the Holy Spirit has emotion he can love and the Holy Spirit can be grieved so the Holy Spirit possesses the four aspects of personality now what I found strange about your book is it, it, it misses out all of the proof texts that Trinitarians have used for 2,000 years it's it's not very convincing to just use what's called a straw man argument. Do you know what a straw man argument is? Uh, no. A straw man argument is an English term. In the Middle Ages, they'd make a man out of straw and they'd practice with their swords. So they'd go on horseback and they'd take a swipe and they'd cut the straw man's head off. Well, it's a man made of straw, so it's easy to, to defeat because it can't fight back. So a straw man is something that's easy to defeat because it's a misrepresentation of the other person's position. And I have looked at your book, Insight in the Scriptures, as well as this book, and you simply ignore all the arguments that Trinitarians have been used have used for 2,000 years um, to defend their position. Let's just go to the first one. In, in Acts 13.2, would you like to read that and explain why the Holy Spirit speaks and he says, me and I? Acts, Acts chapter 13, verse 2, Simon. Unless Kieran wishes to read. 
Acts 13. Yeah. Verse 2. Acts 13, verse 2. So, Ken, do you want to read it? Okay. Acts chapter 13, verse 2, yeah? Yes, thank you. As they were ministering to Jehovah and um, fasting. Fasting. Sorry, I'll read it again. As they were ministering to Jehovah and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set aside for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So it says the Holy Spirit said, and then the Holy Spirit uses the pronouns me and I. Well, the wind can't speak and say me and I. Only a person, someone who is personal, can speak and say me and I. Yeah. I mean, even a parrot, I used to have a parrot. Even a parrot understands the concept of me and I. If the parrot wanted some food, it would say Sammy wants a bit of breakfast. And most pets know their own name. When you said yeah. Sammy, it knew that you were talking to him because it knew he was Sammy. Um, so the Holy Spirit speaks and says, me and I. That's the first aspect of personality. Yeah. <laughs> I understand, actually, Robert, what you're saying. Um, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, actually, on the 120, mm -hmm. uh, it was actually poured out amongst the whole of 120 people and then um, yeah so are you saying actually that uh, all the holy spirit was actually a person which uh, just uh, was divided into 120 people there in um, the upper room I don't believe the Holy Spirit can be divided because the Holy Spirit being God is infinite and you can't divide something that is infinite into bits or parts. So um, the Trinitarian position is not that the Holy Spirit is, is divided. Um, if you wish to quote a verse, you do need to actually read the verse with respect. Yeah. Um, the phrase poured out is an idiomatic phrase it's an it's an idiom it's it's a way of speaking um for instance jesus is said to be poured out in psalm 22 14. i'll read it psalm 22 14 this is prophetic of jesus i am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint my heart is like wax it has melted within me so that's prophetic of jesus when he died on the tree and it says that he is poured out. It means to give yourself for service. To, to give yourself for some task or for some service. Um, yeah. Paul is said to be poured out in Philippians 2.17 and 2 Timothy 4.6. So if you argue that you can't pour out a person, then because Jesus is poured out in Psalm 22.14 and Paul is poured out in Philippians 2.17 and 2 Timothy 4.6, Therefore, Jesus and Paul can't be persons. It's, it's important when you discuss anything, you take the other person's strongest, best arguments and you deal with the best arguments. You, you, you can't ignore them. No. And, and that's what Jehovah's Witness literature that I've looked at does. It always avoids the best arguments the other side has. And it gives a series of straw man arguments which are ridiculously weak and ridiculously easy to refute. But it ignores the, the main argument. Look, in Acts 13.2, how do you explain the fact that the Holy Spirit speaks and says, me and I? Okay. Uh, can we... Uh, I will restart it again. It's a free Zoom account so there is only about six minutes left we may be cut off can i restart it again and we uh, so that uh, let me end this first yes okay and uh, restart it and okay if, you join, if, if that's what you want yes of course sir of course simon okay we'll do <laughs> I think I'm with you. Yeah. I think I'm back with you. So your question was actually about Acts. Uh, Chapter about 13, verse 2. 
The Holy Spirit speaks and says me and I. How can an impersonal force like the wind or, or electricity speak and say me and I? How can, yeah. So, things have happened actually with the angels or with the snake or the serpent or the donkey. So it wasn't donkey actually who was speaking actually. You, you know the account I'm referring to, Robert. It's not relevant. Yeah, you I'm could not. use that argument to say that Jesus didn't say anything. Jesus is an impersonal force because when Jesus spoke, it really wasn't Jesus speaking. It was the father moving him like a puppet. And then you can give the example of Balaam's ass to say that Jesus never actually spoke. Look, the text says in Acts 13 two, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So the Holy Spirit says me and I, Simon. Yeah. And Jehovah can use his Holy Spirit any way he wants. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is clearly working with the Father and Son here. Uh, he's not working in isolation to them. But the text says, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So Holy Spirit can say that separate to me and it was working with them for the missionary work that uh, they were going to go on they were set aside but if the holy spirit is like electricity or like the wind how can he, the holy spirit say me and i because god was guiding it so, but it says, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. I agree the Holy Spirit is working with the Father and Son. I, I don't yeah. doubt that for a moment. I agree with that. But the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The Holy Spirit speaks and the Holy Spirit says me and I. Yeah. The Holy Spirit doesn't work independently. I've just said that. Yeah. I've, I've just that, said that. The Holy Spirit right. never works independently of the Father and the Son. That's right, yeah. Whereas other persons, they can make their personal choice. Jesus could have made, angels have made their personal mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is in complete control of Jehovah. Sorry, Doesn't say that, that again. Correct? Say Sorry. Say that again. Holy Spirit is... Holy Spirit can not function independently of Jehovah. I've just said that. That's right. I said that he, twice actually. Any, yeah. Any angel and Jesus, they have their own free will. They can, but Holy Spirit doesn't. It doesn't have a free will of its own. So whatever actually the Holy Spirit was saying actually to set aside Paul and Barnabas to the Christian congregation there in Antioch, it was under the guidance of Jehovah, under the control of Jehovah. Does the Holy Spirit have a mind? We've got a mind, you've got a mind, I've got a mind. Does the Holy Spirit have a mind? It is in control of Jehovah. Jehovah Sorry, the Holy Spirit is in control of Jehovah, is that what you said? Jehovah is in control of Holy Spirit. Sorry. You, you, yeah. You're confusing me. Does the Holy Spirit have a mind? Holy Spirit is uh, under control of... No, I'm asking you, does the Holy Spirit have a mind? No. No. Would you like to go... Let's read Romans 8, 27, which says the Holy Spirit does have a mind. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. A minute, uh, Robert. Let me turn to Romans. Romans 8, 27. Now, oh. he... Now, he... Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit has a mind. Play Roma is mind. 
Because the, the, the Greek is play Roma, it's mind. The Holy Spirit has a mind. <laughs> yeah. How can, an, how can an impersonal force like electricity or the wind have a mind? Let me read actually this translation as well. Uh, but the one who searches. Which the translation? Heart, sorry? Which translation? But it New doesn't world. have any scholars. There are no scholars who worked on the New World Translation. You don't have one person with a PhD in Greek or Hebrew who worked on the New World Translation. Okay, but still, okay. please allow me, yeah? Yeah. But the one who searches the hearts knows what the meaning of the Spirit is because it is pleading in harmony with God no. for the Holy no, that's a deliberate mistranslation. It's mind. It's play Roma. It's mind. The 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 when the New World Translation was published in 1950, the Greek Scriptures. Your deputy president, Fred Franz, was the head of the translation committee. And yeah. we know he was on the translation committee because he admitted as much in court in Scotland. He went to Scotland in 1954 to take part in the Douglas Walsh trial. And under oath, he admitted that he was on the translation committee and um, he was the head of the translation committee. He also said under oath, I think it's page seven, that he, had, he, he was asked by the prosecution barrister, do you speak uh, Greek, Hebrew, Latin and then many European languages? And Fred Fran said yes. Now, he did speak various European languages. He was a clever, self-taught man. Uh, he spoke them with a very thick Brooklyn accent, but he did speak many European languages, but he didn't speak Greek or Hebrew or Latin, as far as we know. Because later on in the trial, the prosecution barrister handed him a Bible and said, would you please translate Genesis chapter 2 verse 4, which mentions the word Jehovah, would you yeah. please translate that into Hebrew for the court? And he said, I couldn't possibly do that. So Fred Franz perjured himself. He lied under oath in court. He claimed to speak many languages, including Hebrew, but when tested and handed a Bible and asked to translate in court, he couldn't do that. So there are no scholars on the New World Translation. And every Bible that I know of reads mind in Romans 8.27. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is. As everyone with a PhD translates it that way, everyone with a PhD in Greek and Hebrew, as there is no scholarship behind the New World Translation, and your head translator, who became president in 1977, when Nathan Homonor died, Frederick Franz, who was the deputy president, stepped up to become the next president in 1977. Um, he didn't have any uh, training in biblical languages other than one year of biblical studies at the University of Cincinnati from 1913 to 1914. So I have actually the, the Rodrum Bible and it reads, and he that searches the heart knoweth what is preferred by the Spirit, that according to God he maketh intercession in behalf of saints okay so so i wasn't aware of the rotherham bible reading that way but you can go to bible gateway and and all the bibles that i've looked at they all read the mind because the greek word is pleroma which means mind yeah i understand you actually uh, uh robert uh, so you you are saying actually Holy Spirit is a person, separate and distinct person from Jehovah. No, no, I didn't say the Holy Spirit is separate and distinct. You said that, I didn't say that. No, I am saying actually that it is God's active force. But what actually I am saying is it can be just like friends, I can say wrong things as well. I am an imperfect man, uh, but I was going by official publications that you have access to as well online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you 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 have the complete Watchtower library actually that you have 
you can have access to the latest information there in JW dot uh, or or JW uh, online language. I, I, I prefer to base my faith on the Bible and what the Bible yeah. says, yeah. not on what I read on JW.org. I've also gone to LDS.org, which is the Mormon website. There's also the Seventh-day Adventist website. There's lots yeah. of religious groups who've got their website. I can't spend the rest of my life going onto websites. I have to make a decision, and my decision is to follow the Bible. In Hebrew, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, we read the Holy Spirit has emotion. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So you can grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit is an impersonal force like electricity or the wind, how can you grieve something that's like the wind or like electricity? Surely you yeah. can only grieve a person. Yeah, I know, actually, Robert, you want to prove your side of the argument about uh, 1919. No, let's let's stick on one thing at a time. We've, we've yeah. left 1919. Yeah, let's, as well. let's deal um, with the Holy Spirit. But you want to prove your belief about the Holy Spirit, don't you? You think that m I'm wrong. And you think oh, you're no, right, no, that and that's my, that's fine. My aim is not to prove you wrong. My my aim is not to prove you wrong. Right. My my aim is Robert actually that uh, you may uh, benefit from the provisions that God has in store for obedient mankind. What are these provisions? Just get to the point. What are these provisions? These provisions are actually that uh, having a good relationship with Jehovah, uh, for example, the ones who survived the Great Tribulation in Revelation chapter 7, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Are we going on to a different topic? Are we abandoning the Holy Spirit? No, because I, I don't wish to jump to a different topic. Yeah. No, my, my whole aim is actually that somehow or whichever actually uh, way that uh, what is promised by Jesus Christ, for example, John three sixteen, he said, uh, everyone who believes uh, will get everlasting life. God gave His only begotten Son. So my aim is. You mean the new? You, you do you mean the new covenant? No, actually, John three sixteen, he promises. Read the verse. You've got yeah. to read the verse. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse yeah. 17. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Well, that's through the new covenant. Christ yeah. saves people through the new covenant. Don't yeah. you believe that? <laughs> Oh, we, we're, we're going on to a different topic. You know, you, you've kind of abandoned the Holy Spirit. We're going on a totally different co uh, topic. But this is what is offered by Jehovah and Jesus as well. This is why he came. What is offered? What is offered? Is this the new covenant that's offered? This is everlasting life. Is that the new covenant? Yes or no? No. No, so you're saying that there is, there is one form of salvation that's the new covenant and there's a different form of salvation that's, that's other than the new covenant. So there's two different forms of salvation. Is that what you're saying, Simon? Salvation is the saving. So Noah, he, was, he had salvation actually from the flood. So he saved, he was saved by God. And uh, uh, he wasn't he wasn't he didn't have his sins forgiven. See, I, I don't think you've you've prepared. And I think you're now you're abandoning the Holy Spirit. You're jumping on to a new topic. Are you saying in John three sixteen that there is a, a, a way of salvation other than the new covenant? There is a, a means of salvation for people who are not in the new covenant. Yes. Right. Could you explain that? Show me where that is in the Bible. Show me where people are saved who are not in the new covenant. 
where there's a secondary form of salvation for people who are not in the new covenant because you're not in the new covenant the, I am not in the, new the book Worldwide Security under the Prince of Peace at the bottom of page 10 and I've never been a Jehovah's Witness uh, teaches that the great crowd are not in the new covenant that's right I'm not in the new covenant Kiran is not under the new covenant so we are not under uh, both of us are not in new covenant right could could I suggest that we because we were discussing the Holy Spirit and then we sort of changed onto a new topic and I prepare I prefer to prepare I prefer to look at things in depth and look at the Bible in depth I don't wish to dance onto a new topic and then we find out five minutes in that you haven't really prepared for that as perhaps you should have would you be willing to look at a chapter from this book I could talk later this evening or tomorrow or next week it doesn't really matter Chapter 13 is one that really interests me. Chapter 13, paragraph 2, that Christians should not get involved in warfare and politics. Would you be willing to talk about that to me? But you need to prepare before you talk to me. Chapter 13 and chapter 13. Paragraph 2. Paragraph 2. How does false religion misrepresent God by its actions? Yes, yeah, just that one paragraph. And it's it deals with politics and religion. And it says that religions that meddle in politics or support wars cannot represent Jehovah God. Would you be willing to study that before we talk? And then maybe we discuss that one paragraph. Would, would you be willing to do that? Uh, yeah. Can we arrange our time via text another time? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can never speak on a Monday. Any other time is fine, but you must give me plenty of notice via text. Don't just yeah. say I'm calling you in, in half an hour because that's not convenient. Yeah. Give me plenty yeah. of notice. OK, well, thank you, Kieran and Simon. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet it's you. It's nice to meet yeah. you too. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.